My name is Ashley Johnson. I do everything from photography and videography, basically a creative entrepreneur. I went to different areas in Winston-Salem that were symbolic of places where I grew up, um, in neighborhoods and in businesses that have legacy and history here in the community, but maybe aren't very well known. Mark Yourself Safe was a series that I made prior to 2020. This work began as a dream. A bunch of boys in a group home running out down these big rainbow steps, painting their backs this very vibrant orange color and then taking photos of them in the street. I wanted to address fear. I wanted to talk about where fear stems from, how we feel about safety and where we process that through our bodies and how we orient ourselves around safety and fear in our own lives. I'm more interested in how you process that work and how honest you are about what you see and what you feel in your body when you see my work than what my concept is around creating it. I really want people to see themselves through it, even if it's difficult. I really want people to ask themselves complex questions when they look at my work. about to shop. My name is Lakia Shepard and I am um, born and raised here in Winston-Salem. I've been around textiles my whole life, working with like different materials, trying on a lot of, you know, stockings and things like that. So I've kind of adopted a natural love and appreciation for textiles as well as crafting and building. Look at that. Shop all of these, like, well, that color looks great on me. Well, girl. thank you. <laughs> I thought so too. My dad is a mechanic. Our home was like his second shop, so you know, I would go outside with him, you know, kind of crawl underneath the cars and you know, act like I'm fixing, you know, cars and parts mm -hmm. and things like that. Of course, I wasn't, but you know, just the act of it really helped me develop a love for like using my hands and and things like that. My work is focused around traditional African techniques such as like surface designs using beading and embroidery and found objects but then also like weaving and basketry. It's something that you have to stare at in order to find your way through it and find like the hidden gems within it. There's a lot of issues that date back to slavery, which is where the idea of the mask came from. It is a replica of slave masks. I just wanted to take that idea of protection uh, that was used in a harmful way towards black people, trying to dissolve and work through some of those issues that maybe slavery has, has brought up. I wanted to be able to explore that whole idea of protection while utilizing um, gemstones and precious stones that actually have healing properties. Oh, I know, trust me. Well, thank okay. you. Have a great day. You too.
painting made me creative. It was like someone taught you a language and that you could suddenly, you know, be brilliant in or, or poet in. Someone opened a door for me that I suddenly felt like a fish in water. Landscape became integral to my imagery in graduate school after an extended stay in, in Egypt. Something about the landscape spoke about time, spoke about flexibility, resilience, was a, a body unto itself, like the human body. The surface of the drawings transformed into a terrain or a landscape in and of themselves. And that helped mirror or become a kind of scaffolding for the imagery of landscape within my work. As a first generation American, since if we are part of a larger community of immigrants um, and that we make our home as we go. My father was born in what would become East Germany. My mother's from Afghanistan. In both of their narratives, this sense of a lost home was prevalent. It defined my parents, and thereby it is internally defining me. Land is an extension for me of my identity. I will put thicker uh, minerals on the bottom to really grab the finer minerals. Generally, it's using natural pigments, um, natural paper, fiber, fiber papers. This is a Kozo paper. I was hit by a semi truck in 2010. After that, the idea of just making work became more important to me and I found the Nihanga aesthetic really worked not only because of the natural the use of the natural minerals and pigments but the idea of being able to crush something you're doing a lot of applying heat you're doing a lot of kind of traumatic things to these beautiful minerals to make them into something beautiful and so I wanted to apply uh, life experience to my work in a way that was ritualistic, that was tactile and, and real. And so that's how I got into Nihanga. My grandmother was a quiltist and she had a quilting house behind her house. I'm like, oh, my grandmother was an artist and she had her own studio. She was building communities in what she was doing in her home and how she would care for other people in the community. The human connection, I probably got it from her, but I didn't realize it until a few years ago. <laughs> I get to travel, so I get to, to get to know people in different parts of the world. I get to know their stories and then I put that in my work. I love that I get to, you know, wake up and make really weird, interesting things and objects and put them in the world. A lot of my work deals with themes of power and class. I like to talk about those things through the lens of speculative fiction, magical realism, as well as uh, sort of critical black thought and, and study. For a lot of my work, I'm pulling from an essay from a writer named Jeffrey Jerome Cohen, and he talks about monster theory and this notion that every society creates its own monsters and that monsters are usually border between what's called status quo and the other, and oftentimes marginalized people are stand-ins for monsters, and that's used as a means of control by those who have power. Then I look at ways that the effects that the status quo has on black folks. 
emotional, psychological, physical effects of the status quo? And also how do black people subvert the status quo from the transatlantic slave trade up until now, right? We are living in sort of late stage capitalism. How do black people navigate through this capitalist system, through public space? I look at that as this sort of grand narrative.